Hey everybody, Ryan here at eTrailer. Today on our 2021 Ford Escape, we're gonna be showing you how to install the eTrailer.com trailer hitch receiver. But before we do that, why don't we check this one out and make sure this is the right hitch for you. There are a couple of big questions it seems like a lot of people are wondering. And one of them is, uh, you know, is a hitch gonna work with the hybrid models as well as the standard gasoline? Uh, model escapes and the answer is yes it's going to work with both of them so regardless on if it's a hybrid or not or regardless on whatever type of sub model you have the hitch is going to bolt up and work like it should and that's going to kind of bring me to my next point uh, a lot of these have the hands-free liftgate assist where you kick your foot under there and the hatch comes up and uh, it makes sense that people wonder about it because putting a hitch back here is obviously where you're going to kick your foot right uh, but even with the hitch in place, it is still going to work like it should. You're just going to have to kick your foot to either side of the receiver tube opening and it'll pop right open. The Escape is a really popular SUV. You know, a lot of them are out on the road and people use them to do a lot of different things. And so having a trailer hitch back here is going to let you use your accessories like a bike rack or a cargo carrier and it's also going to let you be able to hook up to a trailer to be able to tow it around and whatnot so uh, you know having this back here is going to open up your opportunities on what you can do with your escape uh, i will say this e-trailer hitch this one's pretty new it's my first time actually seeing this one on uh, an escape and i think it's my new favorite uh, i did a uh, kurt hitch not too long ago it's really similar to this but has a little di different finish. I really like that one, but seeing this one now, I think I might like it more. Uh, and I say it because this one has a matte black uh, carbide finish and it almost looks factory. It does a really good job. It kind of blends in and matches the plastic here on our bumper. And so in terms of appearance, uh, I really don't think it can get much better than this one. With this being the class three hitch, it is gonna have the two inch by two inch receiver tube opening. And this is arguably probably the most common size and a ton of different accessories are gonna work with it. End of the receiver tube there is gonna have a reinforced collar for a little bit of extra support. And it is going to use the standard 5 8 pin and clip. Uh, keep in mind though, pin and clip doesn't come included. If you need one, not a huge deal. You can always grab it here at e trailer. And I do like these safety chain openings. They're plate style and they sit uh, vertical almost a little bit further back. And so uh, pretty easy to get to. And they're going to be large enough to allow us to use just about any size hook that our trailer might have on it. Now I'm going to give you a couple of measurements and you can use these to help figure out which hitch mounted accessories will work best. You go from the ground to the top inside edge of the receiver tube opening. That's going to be about 14 inches. So if you plan on tow in, chances are pretty good. You can use a ball mount that has a straight shank or one that even has a slight rise. From the center of the hitch pin hole to the edge of the rear bumper, that's going to be about five inches. And you can use that measurement to figure out exactly if any of those folding type accessories you might have can be stored in that upright position without contacting the back of your escape. Compared to some of the other hitches available, uh, there's that Kurt one like we talked about earlier, uh, pretty much the same deal, just that different finish. And then there's a draw tight hitch available as well. That one though is completely visible. It's gonna hang down below the bumper. Uh, in my opinion, it doesn't look quite as nice as this one, but it does have a little bit higher weight capacity. So if you really only plan on kind of towing some heavier stuff, uh, that one might have, or might give you a little more breathing room uh, as far as that goes. But at the end of the day, it's just gonna be what you like and, and what you're looking to do. Uh, with this setup here, it's a good all around one. Uh, I'm gonna, uh, gonna get the job done. As far as the installation goes, really not too bad. Um, there's uh, two holes that you'll have to enlarge just a little bit uh, to get a bolt to go through. But other than that, everything's pretty straightforward, pretty easy to get to. So really shouldn't run into too many issues. But if you, uh, if you wanna see how it's done, feel free to, to follow along. We'll go ahead and knock this out together now. To begin our installation, we're gonna be here underneath the back of our escape. And we're gonna need to lower our exhaust on some just to give us uh, some extra space to work. Uh, what I like to do though before that is just take a strap 
and run it from side to side. That way we can kind of control how fast and how far we let the exhaust come down. To actually lower the exhaust on each side of the vehicle, we're gonna have a hanger. Over here on the passenger side, there's gonna be a wire that's held in place on it as well. So we'll take that nut off using an 11 millimeter socket. Pull this out of the way, and then we can remove that nut using a 10 millimeter. Driver side, essentially set up the same way, uh, except we can just pull this out using a 10 millimeter. And with that out, we should be able to loosen up our strap and let the exhaust come down a little bit. Now what we need to do is get some of our hardware started inside of our frame rail. So we're gonna be doing these two attachment points first. And what you're gonna do is take a fish wire, the coiled end of it, feed it through, push it towards the front of the car. And there's a hole there on the side that we're trying to get this to come out of. A lot of times it's not just gonna come right out of there. You'll have to kind of reach in there and feel around for it. So once you have it out, what we can do is take a spacer block, slide that on, and then a carriage bolt. And that's just going to thread on. Then you can feed the hardware in get it in there we can pull down on the fish wire until we get our bolt to pass through like that and then I'm gonna do that same exact thing and use that same hardware combination for this one right here what we can do now is measure uh, from the center of this hole back about five and a half inches, put a mark there, and then coming off this hole, kind of uh, draw a line there, and we're gonna have to enlarge this uh, to that size. You can also hold your hitch up and eyeball it that way. Um, you know, I just measured the holes in the hitch and went from there. It's worked really well in the past and kind of saves you the trouble lifting up a heavy hitch, so. Um, with that made, we know where we need to go with it. We can enlarge the hole. So I'm just gonna use a grinding type bit. You could also use, um, you know, there's a bunch of different things you could use, other grinding bits. Um, a hand file would work. It'd probably take you a little bit of time, but it will get the job done. But with that said, I'll go ahead and get this uh, hole enlarged. Now that we have the hole enlarged, we can get our hardware in, just like the other attachment points. Uh, same deal. And once I get this in, we're gonna repeat all those same steps on the other side of our vehicle. As a matter of fact, I wanna mention from this point on, anything we do to this side of the vehicle, we will do to the other side as well because it'll be set up the same way. Now with an extra set of hands, we can take our hitch and get it into position. So you wanna feed the hole wires through the appropriate holes in the hitch. And then we can carefully lift it up until all of our bolts drop through. And once they are through, you can remove the pull wire. Then you're gonna take a flange nut and get at least one of them started on each side, hand tight. That way the hitch will support itself while we work on the rest of the hardware. So once it's like that, get these other two off. And put on the remaining flange nuts.
With all the hardware in place and hand tight, we'll come back with a three quarter inch or 19 millimeter socket and snug it down. And finally, we can torque all of our hardware down to the amount specified in the instructions. If you don't have a torque wrench, you can get one here at E-Trailer, or a lot of times, if you go to your local auto parts stores, they'll have one there available that you can rent. Now we can re-secure our exhaust the opposite way that we removed it. So tighten up your strap and get our hardware started. Once we get it zipped down, then we can come back and remove our strap. And that'll finish up our look at and our installation of the eTrailer.com trailer hitch receiver on our 2021 Ford Escape.